I've compiled a list of Pinterest related questions based on what I've been getting asked repeatedly on all of my Pinterest content, as well as the ones that you guys submitted to my community post and over on Instagram. And in answering them all today, I hope to cover everything that you have possibly wanted to know about Pinterest so that you can take that understanding, go forth and create there successfully. One thing I wanna say first is that people like to deal in absolutes. They want clear cut answers, wrong and right way to do things. And a lot of advice channels feed into this by saying, this is the only way to do X, Y, Z. If you don't follow these instructions, everything's gonna fail. But the reality is there are no absolutes. I've had a lot of success on Pinterest over the years, but it's really ebbed and flowed. I've done things super anal and by the book, and I've also done things counter to all best practices, including my own. And I'm still standing. So take whatever resonates, what seems doable, and leave what doesn't. All right, so I have done my best to try to organize these questions so that they flow logically. So let's dive in. Question number one. What kind of content do I pin? This is a broad question that I definitely wanna spend some time on because the most daunting thing about starting on any platform is figuring out what the heck to post. So we're gonna break this question down into three parts. First, looking more at what type of niche or topics you should post about on Pinterest. I personally believe that almost any niche has the power to succeed on the platform. Looking back to how Pinterest initially gained traction and popularity, the niches that do come to mind tend to be cooking, baking, fashion, weddings, home decor, and other DIY type projects. But the potential is truly so much broader than that. I actually recommend using the Pinterest trend tool to determine if the topics that you wanna create content around has an audience on Pinterest. I bet that you will be pleasantly surprised. Second, you might be wondering what type of content to create in the sense that you're wondering what type of content within your niche will perform well. Well, the thing to remember is that Pinterest is a search engine, so you need to meet your audience with what they are actively looking for. Brainstorm the different ways that you can reach people with different search intents. For example, maybe you are a travel blogger. Maybe a subset of your content is designed to reach pinners who are simply looking for inspiration, to pin to their vision board and inspire them to travel or explore new locations. I would take some gorgeous photos or aesthetic footage of different locations you've been to and pin them. These types of pins are likely to get a lot of saves because it's reaching people who are in that kind of saving, information gathering mindset. Then maybe you wanna create some content that is for pinners who have moved on to the next stage of their search journey. They know where they wanna to travel to and they're ready to start planning. Maybe you create content that is a list of hacks or tips for aspiring travelers. This could be in the form of a static pin for easy saving and revisiting, or maybe you made a whole blog post on the topic and you want people to find your pin, click it, and go to your blog for more. And this strategy of creating different types of content that meet your audience at different stages of their journey can apply to all niches. And third, maybe you are wondering what format to post. And I highly recommend mixing it up. Have a strategy that leverages static image only pins, static pins with text on it, and video content. Different types of pins will drive different forms of engagement, which helps signal to Pinterest that your overall content and brand is good. Building up your authority so it shows more of your content to more people in the future. This video here lays out a deeper strategy for doing so. Next, my most asked question. How often do I post? I've received this question in a multitude of forms. How often should you post? How often can you post per day? How often should you post to all your boards? And here's the thing, Pinterest loves freshness. So you wanna post new content regularly, as much as is realistic and sustainable for you. Pinterest themselves have actually said that posting weekly is a good rule of thumb, emphasizing that quality and relevance matter more than frequency. But you can definitely scale that up if you have the capacity. I am not by nature a a consistent person, so I do the majority of my pinning through Tailwind to help me out with this. It allows me to schedule pins to multiple boards at whatever interval I'd like long into the distant future. When I'm doing a batch pin making session, I will usually take a single pin and schedule it to up to 10 different boards. And then I will schedule it to go live on each of those boards at a weekly interval. And as I do this, I'll try to schedule maximum five different pins a day. And once I filled up those five pins in a single day, I'll schedule my next five pins the following day, again at a weekly interval. 
When it comes to being afraid of posting too much, I do love Tailwind for this because they are an official Pinterest partner. They want to be in Pinterest's best interest and don't want to spam the platform. So when you try to pin, say, too many pins a day, or pin the same pin to too many different boards, it will flag you with a warning that you're being spammy. And just in case that confused you, me posting five pins a day with the goal of posting every day is just my beast mode goals. If you are new to this, aim to start posting a few new pins a week and spread them out the best you can. It's better to post one new pin a week and remain consistent for 10 weeks than it is to get really excited, post 10 pins in a row, and then not have anything for months to come. Next question. Can we post multiple pins for the same blog post or affiliate link? If so, how far apart? So we kind of touched on this, but you absolutely can, and I recommend that you do. But make the pins unique from each other. Again, Pinterest likes freshness. When I'm making pins that point to a specific blog post, I will usually make five different variations of this pin, playing with different visuals or different text or call to actions, and then I'll try to schedule them to go live on different days. How many boards should you have? Don't hate me for this non-answer, but however many boards make sense. With Pinterest, it's actually in your benefit to have incredibly specific boards, but you don't wanna make these right out of the gate because you just don't want a bunch of empty boards on your profile. I counted and currently on Comfy Girl Curls, I have 46 different boards, but I didn't make all of these Pinterest boards right out of the gate. As time has gone on and whenever I felt like I had enough of a specific type of content that made sense grouped together, I would create more. I recommend anyone who is starting on Pinterest look at their content categories or pillars and break those down into different boards. This might look like five boards or 20. But at this point, only make boards that you know you are going to be pinning to regularly. And as you continue to make more content that can be grouped into more narrow and narrow categories, make more boards for them. For example, I think I started with a natural hair board, a makeup for black women board, and a skincare board. Then with time, I broke this down even further. Skincare products for acne prone skin, natural hair bride, eyeshadow for black women. And I could even make new boards that break these topics down even further, as long as I had content to fill them. Does it matter which boards you pin to? Absolutely. Your pins should be directly aligned with the boards you're pinning them to. There should be overlap in the pins description and title and the boards description and title. This helps Pinterest accurately identify what your content is about so that it can serve it to the right people. Text on pins or no? Yes and no. <laughs> In most cases, I would recommend an approach that leverages both. I have pins that don't have any text on it or at most has a little watermark in the corner. And those are pins that I know people are likely to be, again, saving for vision boards and for inspo. Then I have ones with text on them that I primarily use to drive traffic elsewhere. Usually my blog, but YouTube channels work too. It all comes down to your goals, how you want your content to be received, and how you envision people engaging with your content. For example, I was recently having a conversation with an artist friend of mine about how they could potentially use Pinterest to support their business. And we were talking about the very real concern of people stealing her work. So in her case, I wouldn't actually recommend she upload a bunch of image only pins because what's the benefit? People might save it for their vision board, for inspiration, for something that they maybe wanna recreate themselves. But if she were to add text and call to actions, A, it's less likely that somebody is just going to completely rip her off, and B, it's just more likely to appeal to people who are in more of a shopping mindset as they search. Should I just repost my Reels and TikToks? I do not recommend just reposting your Reels and TikToks to Pinterest, just as they are. But you can, and I do recommend you repurpose them wherever it makes sense. If you think that your reel would make the perfect solution for somebody who turned to Pinterest to address a specific problem, then go for it. But in many cases, it might need to be re-edited or reframed. For example, a video sharing business tips on TikTok might have a hook that looks like 
you're hurting your business by not doing these five things. Whereas on Pinterest, you might want to lead right away with five business growth tips for new entrepreneurs. It's just a lot more practical and less hooky. On Pinterest, you are trying to reach people who are already seeking out your content. You're not trying to stop the scroll in the same way that you would on a random person's for you page. How do you properly utilize captions slash the description? Do you write a paragraph, fill it with keywords, What's the strategy? The key to knowing how to properly fill out the descriptions on Pinterest is to again remember that it is a search engine. So keywords are key, but you do not want to be spammy or keyword stuff this section, which is something that I do actually think used to work back in the early days of Pinterest marketing. The best advice to avoid getting flagged as spammy and also just to enhance the user experience of anybody who goes to your description for more information, you should focus on being keyword rich while while still using natural language. If I need to get my brain going, I will usually hop on over to the Pinterest search bar and start typing in my keywords or the topic that I'm pinning and look at what auto completes. Those are likely to be highly searched queries and if they are relevant to my content, I will try to include them as naturally as possible into my description. Are hashtags still a thing? Another super common question. No. No, they're not. I believe they had tested them back in the early days and they used to actually be clickable, but they're not anymore. In fact, I recently noticed that if you try to type a hashtag into the search bar, it actually will say like showing results for blank. And it'll be the word without the hashtag in front of it. Do all pins need to go to an external link or should some be Pinterest only posts? Including external links are not needed by definition of the platform in the sense that you can still pin content without including them. But in my opinion, that's kind of a wasted opportunity. If someone wants to see more of you, more of your content, more context or see the source material of that pin imagery, you want to make it as easy as possible for them. And a link does that. Do you need to engage with slash pin other people's content? It's always good practice to use all of the different tools that a platform provides you with. So in Pinterest case, it is a good idea to be an active user and pinner on the platform. I love the platform, so I am using it to seek out my own inspiration and how to's and answers, but I don't think you need a hardcore strategy for engagement. Again, because this isn't a social media platform. Back in the day, I do know there used to be a lot of Pinterest advice about how many times a day you should be pinning other people's content or that 40% of content posted to your boards should be other people's, but that's not really the case anymore. Of course, engaging is a great overall strategy to just build a sense of community with other people who are on the platform regularly, taking the platform seriously. And I do think that pinning other people's content to your board can help contextualize your boards, but it's not something you need to obsess over and overthink. How do I link in affiliate marketing? In simplest terms, to take advantage of affiliate marketing on Pinterest, you just need to put your affiliate link in the spot where it says external link. So for example, you could photograph a product or photograph yourself using a product or make a video highlighting pros and cons of something or reviewing a product and then link out to where people can shop it using your affiliate link. You want to be very careful with this practice though, because first you want to make sure you are still abiding by any affiliate link disclosure rules. And second, you wanna make sure you really read through all of the fine print of the terms and conditions of your affiliate program. Because a lot of affiliate programs actually do not allow you to use their link on a platform that you do not own. You can also use affiliate marketing on Pinterest in what I think is a more sustainable way, which is writing great blog posts, which include affiliate links, and then making Pinterest pins that link back to that blog post. Schedule pinning versus manual pinning, which is better. I'm a team schedule girly because I do not have the time or like the focus or diligence to pin manually on Pinterest. The only thing I would ever really do manually would be idea pins, which have now been kind of lumped into video pins because they allow me to use the on-platform design features like music, stickers, tags, etc. As always, there is a lot of talk about whether like manual pinning is more beneficial or gonna get you more reach. And I will say that I've never really noticed a huge difference. Again, Tailwind is an approved partner. So I don't think Pinterest is going to like diminish 
the success of it too much. And in my opinion, even if it is getting suppressed a bit, it's still a sacrifice I'd be willing to make just for how much more efficient I am scheduling. What is the best way to schedule? So if it isn't obvious, I am like obsessed with Tailwind. I should know I am not like paid by them or anything. I pay for them monthly with my own dollars. If you do wanna give them a try, I do have an affiliate link in my description. I've been a ride or die Tailwind girl pretty much from the moment I became a ride or die for Pinterest. Pinterest does have its own scheduling feature available if that's something you want to explore and it's free, so that's always a win. But it isn't as robust as Tailwind, which also has a built-in pin creator, which is just so great for batch creating content. What is the best time to post? Tailwind does have a best time to post feature, but in using it, I haven't really noticed anything one way or another. Because the whole beauty of Pinterest is that it is evergreen. Your content builds authority and reach over time, and it can be found weeks, months, years into the future by your audience. So what time you post isn't going to make or break your pin's performance. How long does it take to see results slash gain traction? This is a fantastic question. And just like with blogging, I think this is where Pinterest loses a lot of people. It's a long game and your overall success is a compound of all of the work you've been doing versus how well individual pins are popping off. I batch create a ton of pins at a time and only some of them ever build up steam and traction. Some stay dormant forever and some pick up out of nowhere years later when a topic is suddenly trendy and getting searched a lot. Literally, I pinned a bunch of pins to Creating with Chaos Pinterest account and I had zero monthly views. Then I went on vacation, kind of stopped pinning and I randomly looked at it a couple weeks ago, months and months after this initial batching session and I had 18,000 monthly views and a lot of nice clicks to my website. Website. And it all kind of picked up quite recently. I think the best way to measure success on Pinterest is through monthly views and in outbound clicks if you are trying to drive traffic to an external place like a blog or a YouTube channel. And I would measure these things at quarterly intervals every three months or so to see if the needle is moving or not. If things aren't working, look at what you've pinned as a whole. Analyze, take notes and pivot and check up again in another three months. Pinterest is amazing. And I think my How Pinterest Changed My Life video drew in a lot of people who got really excited about the potential of the platform and mistook me for saying that it was an easy platform. It's not going to give you magic growth without a strong strategy or a willingness to be in it for the long haul. Next question. How can service-based businesses maximize Pinterest? If you're providing a service of some type versus a product, you'll wanna lean more into static pins with text overlays, call to actions that are going to drive people to your resource pages and your services. I would also experiment with some videos that share tips or how-tos to help build your overall authority in this space. These video pins should not be ones that are hard sells. This content should be more selfless. Do you recommend promoting pins? I have dabbled in this with mixed results. With the results mostly leaning towards poor, just because of the nature of the type of content I create. I think the tool is incredibly valuable for those who are selling things, especially products. The beauty of a promoted pin too is that even after you stop paying for it, it just acts like a normal pin, meaning it's still evergreen and will continue to reach people who are searching for it. If you're a creator like me who is sharing a lot more aesthetic content, how-tos, tips, and you aren't necessarily selling something, I would only consider promoting a pin that is going to drive people to a place where you anticipate making a profit. For example, boosting a pin that sends people to a blog post that has a lot of great affiliate links in it. Can you be a Pinterest only creator? I think it completely depends on your income stream strategy, though I don't think it's super likely. Because first, if you were thinking of being a Pinterest creator in the sense that you're doing a lot of like brand deals on the platform, it's going to be very hard. Because brands are so new in understanding the platform's potential, very few are going to approach you and ask you to do sponsored content, and they're not likely to be actively searching on Pinterest for creators to partner with. All the brand deals that I have done on Pinterest to date have been with brands that initially approached me to do Instagram content. And I would take that as an opportunity to educate them on the value of posting on Pinterest and would convince them to add Pinterest 
Pinterest as a deliverable to our existing campaign. For me, the beauty of Pinterest is how it amplifies my overall brand strategy and presence. It plays so well with my ecosystem of other platforms. It's just such a great asset and traffic driver, but I don't think I could survive on it alone. But I do think I could, and I know people do survive with it in partnership with just a blog, like no other social media platforms, just their blog and Pinterest. So I hope you feel more equipped to take on Pinterest and build out a strategy of your own. If you have more questions, drop them below. If we have enough of them, maybe we'll do a part two. And in the meantime, check out this playlist. The answers to some of your questions might be hiding in there. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.